So, time for my unscripted summary of the round of 16, some observations. And going forward, I realized over the last few days I made my videos in the car and like that without the microphone. And while it felt better uh, driving and uh, talking to not have this ear set, um, I think the sound quality is better with it so I keep it at that way and yeah I need to get a microphone a uh, proper one uh, or already we're working on it but let's see how it will go uh, so round of 16 is in the books eight games and my first thought is yeah they were all between super exciting and really really boring with England Colombia somewhere in the middle at least it got some excitement uh, due to the penalty shoe shootout and maybe the hectic nature of the game but other than that nope there was not too much excitement uh, in many games I mean it started out with a bang I think the Argentina France game was maybe not the greatest soccer but uh, seven goals going up and down France finally showing what they're made of uh, Argentina being in it unexpectedly for a little while that was a great game and even Mbappé continues this dominant form that he showed in that game watch out I think uh, he has now three goals I can see him scoring more than that although he has now a tough defense coming up in Uruguay so we have to see about this uh, but the other teams that he will be facing not so sure about that about the, their defensive prowess let's put it that. yeah so it started out with a bang and also Uruguay against Portugal really lived up to the billing it was not as exciting as France versus Argentina but it was a really good game and I mean Cavani's both Cavani's goals both of them respect those were world-class goals um, I like the move that he made ahead of the first goal and then the second goal yeah a great strike Portugal came back into it so there was always some drama and then the two sleeper games uh, yeah sleeper games in a the sense they they made it for me but the Spain Russia uh, I don't know what Spain was thinking this was one of the there was this was one of the worst performances from Spain team I've seen in a long time and they were ahead I mean they were ahead and they managed to get out, out of it because Russia for uh, five minutes decides to get a little bit more aggressive and then a stupid handball and nothing afterwards absolutely nothing you have all the skill in the world and there's nothing coming this was the biggest disappointment especially since I don't rate this Russia team very highly uh, I'm happy for them that they get out of the group stage but given the ability that this team has it they shouldn't have gone further uh, I'm sorry sorry to say it I I really don't know I mean yes we can do conspiracies and whatever I unfortunately said a little bit in towards that regard in my video of the Russia Spain game and we were joking at work yeah probably Putin put some tranquilizers in the water and he might do so for further games um, yeah it's more a bad joke than reality uh, at least I don't really wanna put much into those conspiracy theories un until they're proven. And Spain just played so badly that, yeah, they really deserve to go out. And that's the crazy thing. And again, they mess again with a tournament. <laughs> uh, Euro 2016, they don't lose against Croatia. We don't have a weird bracket. Um, now we have a bracket, yeah, where there's one big name team in there in England. Uh, there is uh, with Croatia a decent team in there that, that I think uh, no one would be surprised to if they make it to the semi-finals given the talent they have there is then Sweden in there which are yeah not exciting but you gotta give credit to them um, hard working very well organized so in that sense uh, yeah probably quarterfinal seems to be the upper limit for them and then there's Russia which has n in all honesty has no business being there I gotta be that frank about it 
Uh, yeah, don't want to say much more. Uh, Croatia, Denmark. Yeah, that was a game that started out great with uh, the best two goals of the entire tournament. <laughs> Look it up. If you haven't seen those goals, you really gotta watch those goals. Uh, YouTube or anywhere. Uh, yeah, they were great. Just typically billiard goals. And uh, then the game fell asleep, 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 asleep until Croatia five minutes before the end uh, realized, well, the others have a pretty darn good goalkeeper who is on a hot streak now, saving penalties, saving our penalty that could have won the game. So we better get it going. Yeah, for five minutes it was a penalty shootout. And yeah, I, we gotta be happy that Croatia won because they seem to be the more skilled side of the two. Uh, but it's also down to them. They should have done much better. Yeah, then it went up uh, again a little bit. Yeah, it was really an up and down, up and down, up and down. I think Brazil, Mexico, I expect a little bit more out of it, but Brazil looks super, super comfortable. Uh, they looked a little bit, what's Mexico doing? Mexico tried, Mexico threatened uh, for about 20, 20 minutes and then Brazil took over and never looked back. And while I think that France really were uh, showing what they're made of, I'm not sure how they would do against the Brazil team. Uh, there's just a lot of love, a lot of talent here, but so is it at France. That would be a semi-final to watch for. Brazil versus France, that could that has the makings of an all-time classic. Although uh, these days, whenever there's an all-time classic looming, uh, it barely lives up to the billing. So um, gotta be careful with the choice of words there. But yeah, that's a mouth, that would be mouth-watering, uh, at least given the names that are of the teams involved and the players involved. And then probably the best game, uh, not as many goals, but the way it happened, uh, Belgium against Japan, that was a wonderful game to watch. And Japan again surprised me, I, I, by, the, by the point I shouldn't be surprised anymore, but Japan, the way they play um, positively, offensively and also very disciplined. There was no ill, uh, almost no ill will coming from them. Uh, they cons there's a reason they won the fair play against Senegal, because they are uh, that I don't want to say well mannered, but they uh, they there is just a, an aura about them that is not the attacking aggressive uh, type, although they are attacking and aggressive in the in the play. Um, had they a little bit more talent in the squad, um, I think they could even go much further than what they achieved. They were really, 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 really well. Of course, um, I know very well for Japan teams, it usually goes in cycles. Uh, the next World Cup is probably a disappointment again. Uh, it's always a little bit up and down with Japan. Uh, I'm not sure if that group will stay together, but for the Asian Cup, uh, they will probably that be the team to beat. I feel quite comfortable about that, uh, making that prediction. Yeah, uh, so this was a one wonderful game and it was really um, a game that Belgium, you knew Belgium had to get it also together, similar to France. Belgium had to get it, get it, get it together and the coach made the right changes at the right time and therefore uh, secured victory for Belgium. And this is something uh, we haven't seen so far. Uh, because so far, Belgium always faltered. They were behind and then they couldn't leave, they couldn't make anything out of that. So that's, that is uh, one big change. And yeah, say about Roberto Martinez, whatever you want, but I think he is, he is not the coach that Belgium needed. Um, will be interesting to see him again, with the game plan of his against Brazil. Uh, is, will he keep up his offensive approach? The Belgium game is of course centered around their great offensive power that they have. So surely they, they uh, playing offensive will suit them. But the skill on the Brazil side, oh yeah, yeah, this could be the speed that they can come up. I don't see the Belgium 
Belgian defense holding up to that but that could be an intri intriguing game and yeah if they're both on form uh, Brazil will win it but this this could be the best game of the quarterfinals although France Uruguay also looks 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 very interesting but I'm getting ahead of myself and then we had the yesterday's game. Uh, I said I'm excited about Sweden Switzerland because they played exactly what I expected. And you know, I sometimes enjoy defensive soccer and, and the structure. I I really can't get a kick out of, out, out, out of it, especially when I see how well organized the, the Swedish team was. And how inadequate actually the Swiss team was. And this is the disappointment because uh, Switzerland like Spain is the more gifted side and they have good players but I never had the feeling that Switzerland will come back into this game Sweden made the goal Sweden should have made more goals and that was that done and dusted and that Swedish defense is a huge huge proposition for almost any opponent that they have so how, uh, you saw how Germany struggled but there you saw that Germany although they're out they have a lot of talent and they could get the Swedish defense into trouble uh, but because they, Germany had so many skilled players so I'm curious to see going forward what Sweden will do so having talked about Belgium and Sweden that's the I still say that's kind of a joke but um, I can see somehow a path that Belgium and Sweden play in the final uh, if Brazil has an off day and if Sweden keeps up their defensive performance there's no no reason why Sweden couldn't go that far or all the way. Will for sure not be the exa most exciting world champion, but you know, Greece won in 2004 against much more skilled opposition with a very, very old school style. And yeah, the world didn't fall apart, but we hate, I, at least I hated the Greek uh, for quite a while. Uh, I think they redeemed themselves in 2014 and then completely fell off the cliff. So no one. Knew. Uh, Greece at the moment is a non-factor for me. Yeah, and Colombia, England, I spent so much time talking about it, it, it this morning. The one thing I forgot about talking about them was that, yeah, there was also the Colombian staff member that, oh, at least with the shoulder, went into the English player. There was a lot of uh, ugliness coming from Colombia. And if it's not backed up with skill, um, this has no no place in my heart at least and i really liked watching colombia at this world cup i think they were as against poland this was one of the best team performances that i've seen and they also against japan in the first half i mean they were a man down and they actually played nicely they were hard done by having not having neymar ah neymar james rodriguez it's neymar everywhere James Rodriguez in the lineup yesterday, but there are still so many skilled players and they didn't show a thing. You could see that they have the better technique and so on, uh, and are more fluid, but except for maybe the last 10 minutes in regulation, then the first half of overtime, there was nothing coming from Colombia. And they also des deservedly went out. And that leaves England. So let's look a little bit ahead at the quarterfinals and then I give you maybe some more thoughts that I that I had. Um, it starts with France Uruguay, which name wise is probably the biggest matchup. That's the only matchup between two former world champions there that we have. And depending on how many titles you count, um, it is five or three. Uh, as far as I can see, FIFA is not recognizing exactly those two Olympics that Uruguay won because they were really uh, kind of best on best Olympics. Although that would mean Switzerland will, give, will get a second place at those Olympics too. Yeah, so they can wear now the four stars over their crest. So a five World Cup winner matchup. And uh, the only other one where we have five is the, of course Brazil against Belgium, but there Brazil have everything. Um, I hope that Cavani plays. If Cavani plays, this could be really, 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 really interesting. Because um, Uruguay, solid defense, superstars in attack. Uh, France is very solid going backward, uh, never committing too many players to attack. And then in attack they have, with Mbappé, an outstanding talent and enough 
other great players that would make for an intriguing matchup as long as defenses don't prevail but um, we haven't seen anything on Griezmann yet I really hope that he will show some of his flair um, Pogba is maybe uh, getting into his role but he's basically chained by being a little bit too defensive and yeah what Uruguay showed against Portugal I think that Portugal although they might not have, not have shown it this World Cup but overall I would always say Portugal is a little bit more defensively sound than France I might be wrong but they are at least very close so that's one to look forward to and I'm still conflicted um, about how to, how, how to do with work on Friday but I'm probably uh, watching it at home will win out Belgium Brazil probably could be a little bit more offensive matchup I'm just a little bit afraid that it's not as evenly matched as I find uh, Euro Uruguay versus France I really hope that Belgium can find their form uh, that all players are on top and if Brazil just needs to struggle a little bit this would make already for a good matchup as I said before I don't necessarily want Brazil to lose uh, yes they're now the big boy and I'm more for the underdogs most of the time uh, but at least I want to see them challenged um, but if you ask me among those four uh, the possible semi-finals I would rank Brazil France on top followed by Brazil Uruguay Belgium France Uruguay Belgium I think this is how I would prefer it uh, especially since France against Brazil is such a um, classic matchup at least in recent times uh, and Uruguay Brazil is a rivalry but you know uh, the, the big World Cup final was in 1950 where Uruguay beat Brazil and yeah they had some scuffles here and there I remember Confederations Cup semi-final where Uruguay actually really threatened Brazil uh, but at least from my perspective um, it is not the biggest of rivalries I also find it interesting that France potentially has to eliminate the three the big three from South America Argentina they already did Uruguay and potentially Brazil uh, if they want to make it to the final that in itself is very interesting and also this attrition that will happen I mean this upper bracket is loaded Friday is gonna be if you want to watch the quarterfinals if you only want to see one day Friday is the day uh, and unfortunately for many of us it's a work day but that is the day that you want to uh, want to watch because there you really got all the big names um, Saturday on the other side where almost everyone can watch will a little bit is a little bit of a drop-off honestly um, I think England Sweden is kind of an intriguing matchup because it happened before and there is some rivalry because most Swedish players at least used to play in the Premier League Sweden always looked up a little bit to Sweden uh, to England Sweden always looked up to Sweden stupid me Sweden always looked up a little bit to England and their style of play for a long time was very very similar now they diverged a little bit and I really gotta say this England team is surprising me a lot and I find it very interesting especially Gareth Southgate a former player is behind all, see me behind all these changes that they're instituting and it's refreshing to see that here is someone who cares a lot and he knows he's the underdog but he cares a lot about how his team will perform and what can be changed he's not falling out we have done all, all of this time we know he's looking forward also I never mentioned this but I really like how he, he uh, represents himself with the suit I'm not a suit wearing guy uh, but it really looks sharp uh, it puts a special something it puts a certain Englishness in him but he is definitely um, at least clothing wise the best looking manager out there and there is a certain class coming from this England team so yeah that's really interesting to see I still think this England squad is a little bit too young to make it uh, to really threaten but given how the bracket sets up they're the odds on favorite to make the final and that is that's the most interesting I would say now um, England plays Sweden as I said intriguing ma matchup I hope it doesn't go the way that Sweden Switzerland went that's England can a little bit threaten 
this Swedish defense because if you put them on the back of their heels they can be cracked having said that um, I am a little bit more for Sweden although um, I will not be sad at all if England makes mix the semi-final really not uh, and then we have Croatia Russia and I really 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 hope that Croatia will will kick out Russia be it in overtime be it on penalties now penalties if it goes to penalties no they both have one on penalties that will be intriguing because the rule is you don't win two uh, penalty shootouts in a row um, and yeah the only team that has done that was Argentina in 1990 uh, and ever since I've whenever a team uh, had a shootout once they lost the next one look it up um, yeah I really hope that Croatia gets through that I they have the talent and probably even the willingness to uh, be a little bit more uh, pull a little bit more penetration against Russia though Russia on the other hand will say well we knocked out Spain Croatia although they play strong but in the heads Spain is more f uh, instills more fear than I think Croatia does but Croatia should go through so whoever Cro whoever is this is a Croatia should play either England or Sweden. Now having said that I am more in favor of Sweden if I'm just from a neutral perspective of course I want to see Croatia England uh, before I want to see Croatia Sweden but you know I for some reason I'm a I'm a little bit more in the Swedish camp there even without Slatan. But make it a toss-up between those two and also make it a toss-up between Russia and England uh, Russia England and Russia um, Sweden uh, I think in both cases Russia should lose although I would feel more certain about it if England makes it yeah so that was uh, quarterfinals and semi-final preview um, a few things that I thought were came to my mind and I mentioned them in my other videos but maybe it's a good time to rehash them here uh, that bugged me I think the first thing is uh, the conditional red card when the Croatian player got felt when he was about to make the deciding goal against Denmark and then there was the penalty and so on um, I understand you don't want to have penalty given against you, red card given against you and uh, for potentially the goal against you. Uh, yeah, the, uh, this double that you are man down and, and, and a goal behind, I, I understand. But I think if the goal is not made and you don't send the player off, it's also not quite fair because a surefire goal was taken from them and there I, it should be, they should make a conditional red card. Uh, you can make it let them sh let the ref show maybe an orange card or whatever but kind of telling the player you're on watch um, you can continue playing if they make a goal you cannot if they don't uh, I think that would just be fair because uh, the player taking a goal away is for me that's a big foul and uh, I saw it uh, it feels a little bit like cheating it is not cheating but there is a penalty and there should be a severe penalty um, tackle him but if you cannot get him you gotta get let the player go I'm sorry to say that the other thing is the timing especially uh, Colombia England yesterday if you have a team arguing for five minutes and then gets this five minutes added on at the end of uh, regulation this is all against the team that was awarded the penalty and all uh, for the team that conceded it and started all the all this trouble a the linesman should be able to intervene uh, in such situations but more so this should not be counted it should only be counted if the team that was a benefactor meaning being given the penalty then falls somehow behind then okay then okay again it might be conditional but i honestly all this arguing and whining and whatever i it didn't feel right to me that they are given five minutes injury time no uh then of course var i think var should also be used for um you know clear fouls even if they're judge judgment calls uh at 
least inform the referee. Please have a look at it. Look at it uh, whether you would give a penalty here or not. We might, we think it, you might have a case of giving the penalty. Um, I thought yesterday at the one scene where uh, the England player was through and it should have been a second penalty. I think that, yeah. Uh, for me, this, this would have been a clear case where VAR can make a, a difference. Also, all this arguing and, you know, hugging and whatever in the penalty box, if you have VAR looking up those things and there are two or three penalties given right at the beginning of the World Cup, there will be no more complaints from any other players and we will not have all this. And we, and we wouldn't have situations where you can have to give a penalty on every uh, corner kick, which is anyway not happening. And you wouldn't have uh, then the situation where um, Kane gets wrestled to the ground and the Colombian players find it that this is uh, the apex of uh, being cheated by the ref. So, yeah. That was a few things that I thought, and yeah, I, have, I haven't seen much, but I think when Neymar is rolling around, um, disgraceful, honestly disgraceful. I, I mean, he was playing better for the, for the team. I didn't, I saw that he was rolling, but I didn't see the scene until a day later, because it was the afternoon game and I just came home. Uh, and I, so I, I, I just saw him rolling and yeah, he l really looked like that he barely survived this game. All this rolling, I think if you start rolling like that, I mean in this case it was off the field, but I think you've got to be substituted. It, it, it just is, is too much and he doesn't help himself. Uh, that's the one thing that I don't get. Why is no one talking to Neymar that if someone is now really uh, knocking you down and really getting on you and really trying to injure you. No one will buy it anymore. You're not helping yourself. Idiot. Absolute idiot. Uh, that might be the one reason, uh, you know, I have, I have, I'm on record on saying that uh, uh, Brazil is not my favorite team, but uh, I have a general like for Brazil and I think um, last World Cup in Brazil, I have a lot of respect for Brazilian Bra Brazilians in general. I just find their, you know, them being always so sure that they're gonna win, win the World Cup, I find this a little bit off-putting. Uh, but if Brazil plays well, they are such a joyful team to watch that uh, I cannot be mad at them or I cannot hold this against them. But if they, you have your superstar acting out like a baby on the floor, it's, un it's un unacceptable. And that surely goes for me against Brazil. Well, that's my little roundup of round 16, a little bit of a preview of how things, how I see things going. I might look a little bit more, uh, I might make another video, but maybe more some uh, perspective on penalty shootouts. Who knows what comes to my mind. Uh, the latest uh, I will post again this Friday evening after the first quarter final. Well, hope you enjoyed this one and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.